Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to my office. Um, I don't know if I've shown my new office yet, but here it is. I'm super excited for today's video because we are talking about what I'm growing this year in 2022. Um, also, side note, I got a new seed box. <laughs> so this is awesome. Um, it is from Easy Storage. I got it at Target. Um, it's actually a waterproof container, which is nice and it's big enough to hold all my seeds and uh, it has extra room in it, so yeah. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take you through everything I'm growing this year and I think this is everything. Um, I probably will end up doing some additional things, but that'll probably be like spur of the moment, like when I'm starting seeds or when I'm direct selling stuff. So. For now, as of January, late January, this is what I'm growing in 2022. So let's get started. Um, I'm looking through my garden journal and I've already gone ahead and kind of planned out what I'm going to plant. So I do this at the beginning of every year when I decide what I'm going to plant. That way I know if I need to order anything else or if I have everything, you know. That way I'm prepared. So, and then I also know when I need to start seeds. So the first category is beans and I will not start any of these from seed. These will all be direct sown in the garden. Um, I am doing pole beans and I think I'm gonna try to do bush beans again. I've had trouble with bush beans in the past, but I'm gonna try them again because I really want to just have an overabundance of beans this year. Um, and <laughs> I think pole beans and bush beans, a combo is gonna be the best bet. In terms of pole beans, I am doing most things that I've grown before. There is one newer variety to me. I did grow some of these last year, but I didn't really get harvest off of them um, because I had to plant them so late in the season, but they are the Blue Lake pole beans. I have not grown these before. I mean, I have, but I didn't really get a chance to harvest. So I'm super excited about these. And then my old reliables, the rattlesnake pole beans and the purple potted pole beans. These are my two favorite varieties of pole beans. They produce a lot. They do not get stringy when they're big. Um, these are purple. Do I need to say anything else? <laughs> enough said um, and these rattlesnake ones are green but they have stripes of purple on them if they are in the sun which is really cool too they both cook to just be green but it's just uh, they're just cool and then I'm also doing some Kentucky Wonder pole beans as well so those are all the pole beans I'm doing um, and then I'm also doing a few bush beans I'm doing the jade bush beans. I actually have two packs of these seeds from two different seed companies. So I may do some of one and some of the other. The dragon tongue bush beans, which are just, I mean, look at those. They're just so cool. They're also delicious. And I'm doing these tender green bush beans from seeds now. So this is a new variety for me as well. I'm excited to grow those. Um, most of these beans, yeah, like here's my other packet of jade bush beans from seeds now. So I may do some of one and some of the other. Most of these new varieties, um, I did not buy. Uh, my best friend Katie gave them to me. So most, like all these beans that are new to me, she gave me. So um, yeah, even, even better, I didn't have to buy them. Next is cucumbers and I am actually gonna do, well, four cucumbers, four different varieties of cucumbers this year. So those are the Ashley cucumber, the Chinese snake, which I did these last year, last fall, and they're delicious. So doing those again, the muncher, which is, it's supposed to be picked when it's smaller, um, but you can make, you can let it get bigger and they're just as good as when they're small, I noticed last year. 
And I'm doing my green dragon burpless. Um, these are in a plastic bag. Um, these are from Livingston. I get these at Rural King. So just if you're looking for these, these are probably my favorite cucumber. If I, if I, if I had to pick a cucumber, I would probably pick that green dragon because it's so good. But then I'm also doing these uh, cucamelons, mouse melons, Mexican sour gherkins. These are technically a melon, but they, this is, I got these from Botanical Interest. The back says cute grape sized fruits look like tiny watermelons with a cucumber flavor. So that's why I put them under the cucumbers. <laughs> um, I do know that these will take over a cattle panel arch, which is why I bought them. Um, I want them to really just take over and I am super excited to try those out this year. Next is herbs and it, it's a lot, <laughs> it's a lot. Um, I'm just gonna get all my herbs out and then we'll just go through here. So for Christmas, my brother actually got me some seeds, which is awesome. He got me some seeds from Seed Savers Exchange and I had never uh, bought anything from them before. So that was cool. I got some new stuff to try. Uh, he got me a, just a pack of just regular basil, so I'm going to do some of these. This triple curled parsley, this I actually winter sowed. And then this flat leaf parsley is from Botanical Interest, but I also winter sowed this. Some chives, which I have a chive plant in one of my buckets that's on the deck actually, but I may try and do some more because why not <laughs> um it doesn't really ever get that big and i don't know if maybe i need i don't i don't know i need to look it up i need to do some research some cilantro which i don't know if i will plant these because i also have um in here somewhere i have slow bolt cilantro and that is usually my go-to and it is from Well, I thought I had it. I don't know what, what I did with it. I had some slow bolt cilantro in here. Anyway, um, this is not an herb, but I have leeks, which I winter sowed. Bouquet dill, which is always like a classic dill. This has always come up for me really well. Some thyme. I'm going to start some thyme again. Uh, do, 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 do more varieties of stuff. This is called Ducot Dill. I did this last year as well and it also came up really well and did well for me. Um, it's a little bit more of like a frilly plant versus like the bouquet dill gets kind of tall. So I probably will end up doing both varieties of dill just to have it. Um, I have my Emily basil which is just a regular Genovese. Uh, it, this actually does really well in a pot, like in a, you know, a smaller container, which is nice. I have Thai basil just in a bag. I have some more mammoth dill in a baggie. Uh, da, da, da. dark opal basil. I'm going to do some more of that. This is a really cool variety. It's dark purple. I have my lettuce leaf basil, which is delicious. And just another bag of some parsley seeds. So those are the herbs, basically just standard stuff. I just, I'd like to try and get some perennial stuff established like thyme um, and oregano and parsley. I've never been able to get those to come back after the first year and I'm gonna try to get them to come back after the first year. Try to make them perennials. So trying some newer varieties this year for those things, but fingers crossed, <laughs> I will get some like perennial herbs going. Next up is lettuce and I winter sowed a lot of this. Some of it I did not, but I might just throw it in a raised bed and see what happens. Um, 
I normally will do like these little Tom Thumb lettuces are really good. Those I do actually grow as heads. Most things I don't grow as heads. I just kind of uh, do it as like salad greens. I'm doing blue curled scotch kale. This is something I winter sowed. Um, I think I did this one, the Matador spinach from Botanical Interests. This one I've done in the past and it's come up well. So we have our standard delicious butter crunch lettuce. I have also let this grow to a head before too. Nero Toscana kale, which I winter sowed. Um, just some arugula. I winter sowed this as well. I think, I mean, the packet's open, so that makes me feel like I did. Some celery. I also winter sowed these. This I've never grown before, but I'm kind of excited to try it. Here's my slow bolt cilantro. I don't know why it's in the, this is not where it goes, but this is it. It's from Baker Creek. I don't know that it really is slower bolting, but that's what they say, so whatever. Um, I also did this Apple Blossom Swiss Chard Blend. This is like a baby greens mix. So I uh, winter soaked some of that. And then I just, this is the mescaline mix I use. This is just like the free thing you get from Botanical Interest. I have three of these. So I just use those. Um, I don't buy mescaline mixes because that one's really good and every time I order from botanical interests I get another one so I don't feel the need to buy it. I do have some of Baker Creek's um like Rocky Top lettuce yeah this the Rocky Top lettuce blend this is good um but it, it doesn't have like arugula and stuff in it and the free mix from botanical interests does so I like that now, okay, <clears throat> peppers, no, not peppers, melons is next. I am going to try to do some watermelons. Um, I'm going to try to just let them go. I'm going to put them in the backyard, in the ground, and just let them go. I'm going to try to keep them controlled. I say that now, when it's out of control in August, you can... Um, tag me in this video and so I can see that I said I'm gonna try to keep them under control but I have a few I have a couple varieties here that I might try, I, I don't know I'm I don't know which one I'll do I'll figure it out I have sugar baby and I have crimson sweet um, these are the two varieties I've tried to grow these on trellises before and it just hasn't worked out super well so I'm, I may try and do it just let them go we'll see um, I'm not going to do any peas for spring just because my garden's not ready yet. So I'm, I'm not going to worry about peas for right now. Peppers. I am going simple with peppers this year. I just, I grow these things like pepperoncinis. And they're good and I pickle them and they're delicious, but I don't need to grow those every year because I still have them from other, from past years. So I am doing the Chocolate Beauty Sweet Bells, which is a very delicious bell pepper. I'm doing one lemon spice jalapeno plant. I'm only doing one. I'm doing, let's see. These are the, Keystone resistant giant bells, which I love. And I'm doing shishitos, which are delicious. And these are called Ituda, Etuida. I don't I don't know. They're from Baker Creek. I don't they're just in a bag. So keeping it simple with peppers this year. I just want to um grow what I know we like and that's a lot of sweet bells and we do use jalapenos but to be honest I still have a bag of frozen jalapenos in the freezer from 2020 so um 
like a gallon size bag. So I don't necessarily need to grow uh, any more <laughs> jalapenos. I am going to do one plant, but I'm not going to do any more than that. So next up is the category I named roots because I don't have, I, I don't know. And this is just like, I have like some just random stuff in here that grows as a root. Like I have some American purple top rutabagas in a little bag. I have some of the of these royal shantini carrots. These purple carrots. Some all American parsnips. Um, these yellow carrots, I don't know what these are called. I think they're called Amarillo. I don't know. I was gifted this seed packet and the top was ripped off, so. <laughs> the Scarlet Nantes carrot, this is from Seed Savers. And this is the Karen's Family Hanover Rutabaga. I might try these as well. And I have my Danvers half longs. So I'm excited to have the space to dry to try root vegetables again because I don't I haven't ever really had it. So I'm pretty excited about that. As far as squash goes, um I don't know if I'm gonna do summer squash. I may wait to do that in the fall, but I just have like my Italian striped zucchini. This is a really good zucchini. It also this gets a, a pretty good size, but it doesn't get like too seedy, which is nice. And then I just have my yellow crookneck squash. This is a new one for me and I bought it because of the name. It's a hybrid, it's called Cube of Butter. I just, I mean, yeah. And then I have one variety of winter squash I'm gonna try and that is the Honey Nut Squash. That's all for squash for me for this year. I think I'm gonna do them in I'm gonna start my winter squash, but then I'm gonna wait to do summer squash for the fall. And then tomatoes. So I am doing some San Marzano's. I do San Marzano's every year. Um, these are not necessarily, these are not necessarily a tomato that I grow to eat fresh, but I grow them to freeze them and use them for sauce and salsas. And it's worth it to me because they, you get so many tomatoes off one San Marzano plant, it's ridiculous. Um, I'm doing the Sun Gold Cherry Tomato. Um, I'm doing this. I mean, these, so I buy a lot of seeds from Tomato Fest for tomato seeds. They don't have very good package, like the packets are all the same, they just have a sticker on them. But this one is called Salisaw Cafe Cherry. Um, I'm doing the Aussie, again from Tomato Fest, the Aunt Ruby's Yellow Cherry, again from Tomato Fest, the Delicious, this is a burpee tomato, um, I'm doing Firebird, which is from Tomato Fest, Chianti Rose, also from Tomato Fest, I promise I don't buy all my tomato seeds there. <laughs> Um, I'm doing Kellogg's breakfast. See, this is from In My Gardener. This tomato is amazing. Amana orange, also from Tomato Fest. <laughs> Black cherry, also from Tomato Fest. Aunt Ruby's German green, which is my favorite tomato from last year. This is a new one for me, blueberries cherry, which actually a lot of these are new for me, but this is another new one, blueberries. I'm doing the carbon. I actually have multiple packets of this, but this one is from Baker Creek. I also have some of these from Tomato Fest. So doing this one, this one is really good. It has almost, this one has almost like a smoky flavor, which I love. So that's all my tomato seeds. <laughs> that's all the varieties I'm doing this year. I have so many seeds that I have not grown. Katie gave me so many varieties of tomatoes that she either tried and didn't like or didn't do well for her or what have you so 
And we have we have also in the past like bought seeds and then shared them. That's why so many of my tomato seeds are in baggies because that's what we do. And then the only other thing I have on my list is flowers. And for flowers, I really also love flowers. So here's all my flower seeds, it's a lot. Um, and some of these, I will start indoors and some of them I will not. I'll just direct so, but I'm doing some Italian white sunflowers, some lemon queen sunflowers. I gotta, I'm trying to read my list. I should be able to just tell from looking at them if I'm doing them. Um, I surely double mix poppies. I actually direct, or I winter sewed these. I'm doing some bachelor buttons. I'm gonna do these Clark's Heavenly Blue Morning Glories on a trellis, like an arch trellis. I'm doing these peach milba nasturtiums. This packet is really cool. These are from In My Gardener. They've started doing different like packet designs or some things, and this packet's really nice looking. I have a Rainbow Blend Coleus, which is, I'm excited for these. I have the Shockwave Purple Tie-Dye Petunias from Botanical Interests. Really stoked for these, I love petunias. I have Benary's Giant Blend Zinnias, which these I'm so stoked about. Last summer I was at our farmer's market and I bought this bouquet of flowers. Um, and it was like right after we moved, like the week of my birthday. And they had this, it had this zinnia in it. And it was, I kid you not, like the size of a saucer. And I said, do you know what variety this zinnia is? Because I am in love with it. And I bought it from a local like flower farmer. And she said, it's a Benary's Giant Blend Zinnia. And I said, okay, thank you so much. Like I wanna grow these. And so I immediately came home and bought them from Botanical Interests. And I'm so excited to grow these myself and see how big they get. Um, I'm doing some more Dwarf Coral Mix Coxcomb. Those are the ones that kind of look like brains. They're really cool and I am really excited to grow those again. I'm gonna do the Velvet Queen Sunflower. Um, I think I'm gonna do more of these Mexican Red Torch Sunflowers. Those get really big, like the plant is big, but it's like a multi-headed thing. It's beautiful, I did them last year as well. Queen Lime Zinnias I just have in a little bag. These I harvested from a bouquet. So hopefully, I don't know, we'll see what I actually get. Um, I'm doing these marigolds that are in the Ziploc bag. I don't know what they're called. I just wrote big marigold on the bag though. So we'll see, I don't know. I think these actually came from the dollar store, but I don't know, I don't know. But they have huge flowers. So I'm excited. Uh, I'm gonna do some more Laura Bush Blend Petunias. I did these last year. I think that this might be the big marigold. These came from the Dollar Tree last year and they're called Cracker Jack Mixed Colors. I don't know if they'll have these again, but if they do and you like marigolds, these are really cool. I have some Pompous Plume Solosha, which is really, I'm excited for these. Um, am I doing these? I don't know, I might. These are the Sunspot Dwarf Sunflower. And then I have my Petite Yellow Marigolds, also from the dollar store. And I have this Bulb Companion Mix that I haven't really done anything with yet. So I may sprinkle some of this around in my irises, so we'll see. So that is pretty much everything I'm growing for 2022. I'm sure I will have some more things that I either impulse buy at the local plant nursery or 
whatever. But for now, that is what I'm planning on growing. Um, I'm so excited to show you my space and how I'm gonna have things arranged, but I don't really know how I'm gonna do it yet. So I'll figure it out. But I am really excited to start seeds here in a few weeks and get the garden season underway. So thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.